I'm going to start over. Right. Okay, so are there any questions about, you know, where we're at so far, what we've done so far? Um, I think we're on day six or seven of these, um, these evenings, and I'm still going. I'm running out of things to say, but, you know, if I don't, if I don't know what to say, I just make stuff up, as you know. Um, and I hope that I do it with enough congruence that you think it's really clever, when really it's probably just rubbish I'm just rattling on about. So, look, is there any questions about what's going on? How was your kickboxing tonight, Jess? I'm sorry I missed it. Oh, it was great. It was a really good session. Um, I had a couple of people join that haven't joined before, but they loved it. A um, yeah. little bit more technical, bit of boxing, bit of head movement, getting everybody moving around a bit. Good yeah. session. Yeah. Well, I'm really, I'm really chuffed. I'm sorry I missed it, but I was house hunting today. You can watch the recording. I did record it. I just need to sort it all out and then send it to you. Yeah, I will. Oh, yeah, let's, uh, yeah, we will do, and I will do. I have to right. say, I, I would have been there, but I did the yoga this morning and I'm absolutely pooped now. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's strange. I thought yoga was a really soft kind of exercise, but I think I, I was more, it was more painful than Jessica's kickboxing. Yeah, I've got, Yoga's I've got... tough. I find yoga hard. I'm a kickboxer, but I can't do yoga. <laughs> it just Until makes now. me feel like I've been Until doing now. loads of exercise. You know, I know um, Sandra last night, she said that those words until now, when we say something like that, I'm not any good at uh, yoga. And she said, we just stick those words on it until now. But one of the greatest words in the English language is yet. That's one of my favorite words, especially when you've got kids. They come home and say, oh, I'm not any good at football. Just stick the word yet on the end of it. You know, I can't do this math yet. Because all of a sudden, what you was a cul-de-sac suddenly opens up to possibilities. And it's a great word. There are a few words in the English language, I'm gonna say this while it's on my mind, we're talking about words. Especially if you're, um, if you're a therapist and you're using language like we, most of us are, there are two words in the English language that if you use them in a sentence, everything that comes after those words has to be believed for the sentence to make any sense. And those two words are, realized i've forgotten for a moment then realized and aware when you use those two words in a sentence anything that comes after those two words has to be believed for the sentence to make sense so when you're doing your marketing if you just say um, hypnosis is very good for helping you without a phobia people can believe you or believe you not but if you say my client john realized that hypnosis was really good for us for eliminating his phobia the emphasis is shifted to someone realize something and the rest of that sentence just becomes believed and it's the same with the word same with the word aware you know if you're you're going to go corporate and start working with corporates for sales let's say you said you know my my company uh, can help your my company can help you increase your sales they can believe you or believe you not but if you say when Sainsbury's used my company, they realized that it increased their sales. All of a sudden, the emphasis shifted that someone realized something and the rest of that becomes belief. So really empowering words. And we use them in um, hypnosis. You'll have all heard me say it pretty much every time I take into trance. I say, I wonder if you're aware that you've drifted deeply into hypnosis. All of a sudden, is the thing shifted from, am I in hypnosis to how deep am I? You, the, the fact you're in hypnosis becomes accepted. So it sounds subtle, but these words are really important because is another word. If you just say to your kids, you know, your green's up, they can resist that. But if you say, um, eat your greens up because you'll find yourself being much better at football. Just be using the word because in a, in a, in a line. I don't know we're getting onto this. We're going to talk about sleep in a while. But they're, they're important words. And the other word, as I said, is yet. Or as uh, Sandra said last night, until now. You know, I've never been any good at yoga until now. You know, I, I can't do a press up, as someone said, <laughs> yet. You know, until now. 
And so those words are really important when we're working with our clients, just to, if you want, if you want to be effective with your language. So anyway, where was I? Oh yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, sleep. All right. It's one of the things we all suffer from at some time. And there are two kinds of problems with sleep I've found with my clients. One is um, the client who goes to bed and lays there awake. And the other one's the one that goes to sleep and then wakes up three hours later and can't go back to sleep. They're basically the, the yeah, is that you, Alyssa? Did you wave then? So you go to sleep and you wake up and then can't go back off to sleep, is that it? Right, okay. Well, we're gonna deal with both those problems tonight. Someone asked me, I don't know who it was, about um, the Fitbit. I think that's what you call them on your wrist. I've Maybe got one, but <laughs> like with my glasses, I never know where they are. That's why I don't wear glasses and why I haven't got a Fitbit on. Because my memory, if I had a Fitbit from my memory, that would be really good. And then I'll remember where my Fitbit was. But unfortunately, I don't. So, but the Fitbit's really great for measuring your sleep. And it's not until you wear one at night, you realise how poorly you're sleeping, how many times you're actually awake in the night. And it does measure it. And someone asked me about the, the right amount of sleep we should be having. And we all think, you know, we, we, as a human being, if we don't get REM sleep, then we quite literally go crazy. And that's why I don't think they do it now. But in the, in the forces years ago, when I used to capture, um, you know, a, a, an enemy soldier, and they wanted to get information out of them, they just used to deprive them of sleep. And if you go two days without REM sleep, then you go absolutely mad. You can't, your brain can't, can't cope without it. But the other side of that is, and you'll find it with people that come and see you who are depressed, if you're having too much REM sleep, because when you're in REM sleep, it's depleting your energy. The brain's working so hard, you know, it's, it's kind of clearing out all the things that happened that day. It's, it's working out what's, what you need to live by and the stuff that you don't need anymore. And when you're in REM sleep, your body's actually been depleted of energy. So you need REM sleep, but with people who are depressed, they get hours of it. So they're ruminating, if you like, all night long. So what happens, they wake up and they're tired. They're physically tired because they've had too much REM sleep. So if that is you, if you are waking up tired, then you need to close whatever loop is going on in your head before you go to sleep. So if you're thinking, I should have called my sister, you know, we had a row and I should have called her, but I, I haven't done it, then do it. Make the call. You know, if you have an argument with your partner, before you go to sleep, resolve it. If you've got something going on in your head from work, then spend 30 minutes thinking about it. Then if you do wake up in the night, you can say, well, I've had my time worrying about this. I'll deal with it tomorrow. Because that's what happens when you're not sleeping. It's like an open loop that you've not closed. So just think about it. If there are things that you think, I should, I should have said this, or I, 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 you know, I should have done something, if you can, do it before you go to sleep. And then you find yourself sleeping properly. The other thing, like Alyssa says, where you wake up, and for whatever reason, sometimes, you know, for, through different reasons, we get in a habitual way of sleeping. I know a lot of people, it, it occurs when they, when they have young children, you know, and they're feeding the baby through the night and then the baby's sleeping and you're still waking up every two hours. But there are other reasons for doing that, not just because you've had a child and you've had to feed it. So it's as if for Alyssa, what I want you to do, Alyssa, when we do this, and I want anyone that's got the same problem where you're waking up at a, you know, an undesirable time and then you can't go back off to sleep, I'm going to ask you to imagine some things because you've imagined that you've got an alarm clock that's, that's set for like three o'clock or 3.30 or four o'clock. And in your own head, and then all of you can do this because you're all going to sleep better because of it. We're going to imagine just resetting that clock to a time that suits you. You know, it's, it's, um, we're in lockdown here. So, you know, it's, apart from the fact that I've now been hypnotized to get up at 8.30 and do my exercise every morning, I could really lay in bed for a little bit longer. But now I'm like, like a robot, I'm up, down, doing my rope exercise, um, which I'm, I'm fine with. But, you know, you can say, okay, I need to be up by 8 o'clock, or I need to be awake, awoke at 7 o'clock. And then we're going to reset that body clock for you so you'll find yourself just sleeping through the night. 
How many of you have used the suggestion I gave you, I think it was yesterday for sleeping better, where you just say the word relax, relax. You, Tess, has it helped? It was interesting because I thought I'd just go, you know, straight off into a deep sleep and it took a while, but then I slept really well and I slept right through till 7.30, which is unusual for me. Well, good, good. And that's going to stay like that now. You know, and you've just got to, I'm going to give you the same suggestion again tonight. So you can, when you get into bed at night, with the intention of going to sleep, you just get yourself comfortable and then repeat that word, relax. And the other thing about it is if you're, if you're struggling to go to sleep at night, which some of you do, you lay there trying to go to sleep, trying to go to sleep, you lay there for hours. I'm going to hypnotize you and you're going to try and stay awake. You know, if you're working with people that, go, that, that struggle to go to sleep, we know in, in our language, the hypnotherapy language, that try implies failure. And so we're going to give them something else to fail at. We're going to say, we want you to stay awake for 30 minutes. And whatever you do, you mustn't fall asleep. Just repeat the word relax, think of the color blue, and just try and stay awake for 30 minutes and see what happens. And what happens then, they fail at that and they just fall asleep instead. So I'm going to spotlight myself just in case it's not on the, on, on the thing. Right. So. So is there any other... Um, anything I've else got a to... question quick, Freddie. Oh, yes, yes. Um, I sleep quite well, generally. But a question came up. I slept really well last night because I had a, a wonderful hypnosis session with Rashav and then with you as well in the evening. And he asked me this morning if I could remember my dreams. And it got me thinking that, no, I couldn't, but I, I know I missed the moment, but is there a way that we can become more aware of what our subconscious is doing while we sleep? Is there a way that we can pay more attention to what we're thinking about when we wake up? There is this thing called lucid dreaming and there's a great, I'm, I'm trying to think of the guy who does it. He's a Polish guy, Mikhail. I'll, I'll find his name for you. That's, that's what he, he kind of teaches in Las Vegas and stuff. And he's a good friend of mine. We, we do these conferences together. Personally, I think there's a reason why nature shuts, your, shuts those dreams off. You know, I remember my kids would have nightmares. And no matter how bad a nightmare is, it's still only a dream. That's what he used to say to them. Whatever it is, that you're, whatever how bad it is, it's only a dream. And you've got to think that, as I was saying to you the other day, that all the information that comes in through our senses is there. Even though you think you're not listening to the cars going past or the conversations around you, it's all in there. And then at night, when you're sleeping, in an REM sleep, it's just going delete, 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 delete. Yeah. If you're not getting enough REM sleep, then you're, you're waking up with all that, all that stuff still in there. I don't, you can, I mean, it's quite interesting. I've done it, I've done that lucid dreaming because then you're awake in your dream. It's a very odd thing to do. And you can then, you can then control the dream. Whereas normally you're just dreaming and you're just in it. But when you lucid dream, you can actually get, you can actually make changes in the dream. So I think it's something you might be interested in and I'll put yeah. you in touch with this guy. Um, Thank you. Yeah, but, but I, I personally think there's a reason why nature doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't always let you remember that sleep, their dream. And I, yeah. I think it's because we've got enough stuff in, in the day to remember without thinking about all the dreams we had as well. Is it, so anyway, that's just my feelings on it. Um, Can I ask two quick questions before yeah. you start? Do you know if there's an ideal length of time for REM and deep sleep? And how much do you sleep? You don't seem to sleep very much. So me. that would help me conv convince me that I don't need as much. I'm convinced I need eight hours, <laughs> if not nine. Well, I think that's that's kind of the kind of benchmark, isn't it, to sleep for eight hours. But I think, I don't know whether it's because you get older. Um, I don't know. But I, so I, I, need, I need eight or nine hours. I struggle with less than eight and nine is optimal if I'm doing more, either mentally or physically. And when I'm training to fight, I always, I can't do less than nine hours. I think we should all try and get seven or eight hours in. 
Um, and, I think that's kind of the optimal time to sleep. And, and then you'll be amazed right how, how much, if you could put a Fitbit on, how many how much of that you're actually awake, you don't know you're awake. Oh, I have a Fitbit, and that's why I'm wondering, because I see how much is in REM and I see how much is in deep, but I don't know if that's good or bad or indifferent. How much REM are you getting? About an hour and 15 minutes. I would say that's pretty in the optimal level. Yeah. Any more than yeah. two hours and you're depleting your body of energy. And anything and less, than like, less than half an hour, and I think you're not, you're not, it's not functioning as well as you can do. So I would say you're, you're, that's pretty good. I mean, I'm, but I'm not an expert, to be honest with you, but I think that's, that's fairly good. And then it's deep sleep and light sleep. And again, when you're in deep sleep, your body's regenerating. So it's deep sleep and REM you need to be looking at. And if you're doing that, then you're getting X amount of hours of deep sleep, you know, three or four at least. I know, you know, because Jess is active and she's younger. So I think it's, I think it does change as you get older. You know, it's... Uh, so you get down to like, I have two minutes a night and it seems to suit me at the moment. So, you know, a minute of REM and that minute of deep, and then I'm up and ready to go again. But did um, you say four hours of deep? I'm only getting one hour of deep. Oh yeah? Yeah. I might be wrong, honestly, Diana. Don't don't be guided by me. I thought you had to have a reasonable amount of deep sleep. It's in that oh. deep sleep when you're completely out, you know, when, when your body's completely re regenerating. I'm not saying that's ideal. I'm saying it's what I'm getting. And when I've Googled it, I haven't been able to find it. That's why I was. We have a look as well, and I'll, I'll get into contact with you. I'll have to. I'll have to check it out for you. I think great. I know somebody that specialises in sleep, so I'll speak to him as well for you because I'm, I'm interested now, and I think I need to get myself a Fitbit because well, I want. Yeah. yeah, get a Fitbit. You know, they are worth having because it does realise how much I sit in a chair all day. Yeah, you know, but my my seventeen year old son, he's an expert on sleep. He really is. I mean, he can sleep for hours and hours and hours. You know, like two days in a row, whatever it is. So I'd say he's an expert. Well, I don't know. He, he better help you, Diana. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he is an expert in sleeping. But um, yeah, so that's what we're going to focus on tonight. And just once again, eliminating anything that's holding you back. Why why you're not sleeping? I want you to just think about it for, as I'm talking to you for the next two or three minutes. Think about the things that when you go to bed at night, what are you thinking about? And what's, um, what, what's worrying you? What's stopping you from going to sleep? And if, like everything else, it is habitual the way we sleep. We get into a pattern of sleep and then it becomes habitual. So we're going to deal with that in the same way as we do with every other habit by using parts. And I will speak directly to the part of you that's responsible for your sleep pattern. Ask it to explain why you're not sleeping optimally. And then ask it to make whatever changes at a molecular level that allow you to sleep and allow you the freedom from any kind of irrational fear or anxiety that's stopping you from sleeping. And again, you know, we've been talking about this now for about three or four days, but for me, it's one of the most important things that I've learned in the last few weeks. And as I keep, I keep, uh, you know, um, referring to Galen because it came up in a conversation and I've been using it since. If when you're in bed and your mind's running to stuff that you've done in the past, Remember, the past no longer exists. And then if it's something that's stopping you right now in the present, ask the question, when did I make that decision? How old was I? Where was I? Who was I with? And was it my decision? And is that decision any longer viable now that I've evolved as a human being, now that I've grown, now I have the experience I have now? And if the answer is no, then delete it. And then you'll find you'll be clearing, clearing your mind before you go to sleep. Just say, okay, it's no longer there. I've had people that, that their lives are being ruined by something that happened to them. And the person that did it or created it is no longer even alive. And they're still, their lives still being ruined by it, by that past event. When we, when we know that we can look at it and we survived it, that's the first thing we've got to say, I survived it, look at it again, reassess it, reevaluate it, and then go, right, delete that from my mind. Take the learnings from it. You've got to instruct your brain in this way. Take the learnings, take the strengths, then let go of that emotion because it's no longer viable. And then you'll move on with your life. And you can do that in those moments before you go to sleep. Just think, okay, What's, that's been bugging me for a long time. 
it's in the past for a start. It's in that void that stretches back to the Big Bang. It no longer exists. Delete it. And you'll find you're just clearing all that space. The other thing I'm going to run with you tonight, just for fun, is a psychological defrag. You're going to love it. All right, because if you look, think about your computer and think about all the cookies. You know, when you sometimes you click on it, it says, you know, this site has cookies. And you can't be bothered to kind of find out what it is. And you just go, okay, accept. And then there's a cookie. I don't know what they taste like, but cookie somewhere in the back of your computer. And there's like hundreds of them, thousands of them. And what they're doing is they're like looking at all the stuff you're doing. And then they're, they're there and they're slowing down your machine. But you think about every negative word that's been said to you. Every time someone's aimed an angry insult at you or made you doubt yourself, they're like those cookies in your brain. And there is a way on your computer, and I don't think it's very difficult to do. You go to, I don't know, um, services or whatever it is, and you can see that there's a thing called a defrag. And you click on it, and you'll see all these lines, which is the measuring all the memory stuff on your computer, like blue and white lines, I think it is, and red lines. And then you hit defrag, and what it does this defrag part of your, your computer goes through all those cookies. It goes, and it does it while you're doing other stuff. And then after half an hour or an hour, you look at it, and it's all like white lines, and all these gaps between these white lines where it's cleared all this memory space. And if you think, you know, I know this, there are some people who are in their 20s, but the majority of us like, like me in my 30s, or some of you in your 40s or 50s, you know, think about all of the stuff that's being downloaded into our brain. All that stuff is just there. Useless memories. Things we're never going to look at again. People we're never going to see again that still, when we think about and still make us, spikes us in some way. You know, all the mistakes we've made, all that stuff that's no longer any use to us. So we're going to run a defrag on that. So by the time, you don't, have to, you don't have to do anything. You don't even have to listen to me because your brain is going to do it for you. And by the time we finish this evening, you're going to have that, that memory space. So you can then start to fill it with things that you really want, right, that serve you right here in the now. And then you're going to find yourself sleeping soundly. So think about how long you want to sleep for and make a decision because when we set this tonight, it will be the way it goes. You know, if, if you think, well, I always need to get up in the night and use, use the bathroom. And then I'll go back to bed and I'll lay there and I can't go back to sleep. That's not going to happen from tonight. You're going to get back into your bed. You're going to repeat the word relax and you go back into that deep sleep. And you're going to awaken at the time that you set your body clock to. Think about this, Alyssa. It's going to be great, is it not? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be incredible. All right, so once again... All you have to do is absolutely nothing. When I run this defrag, you're going to love it. It's, it's the optimum way. And again, this is down to Galen and, and our conversations. The optimum way to delete all of that useless stuff that's just been clogging up your brain. Since you were a kid, probably. And we're going to do that this evening over this next half hour. A complete defrag of your mind and your brain. So that you're zinging when you leave here. Right. OK, so get yourselves comfortable. Once again, make sure you haven't got anything hot on your lap. Um, by that, I mean coffee, not a man or a woman or something like that. But something, you know, make sure you've got anything hot on your lap and then get yourself comfortable. Get yourself settled in that chair. Look on this as time out for you. Listen to me if you want. But I don't mean this rudely. I'm not interested in your conscious mind. Think about something you want to feel differently about when we finish here today and think about how you want to sleep. And we're going to alter all those things for you. OK, right. So when you're ready and I will, rec I am recording this, but if you want to record it, that's fine. But uh, I am recording it. OK, what I'd like you to do is this then. Just place your hands separately, place your feet separately if you can. Take a deep breath in, and as you breathe out, just allow your eyes to close. Only as quickly as you're ready to make these changes. That's right. 
Just with your eyes closed, you can begin to relax. Think about those other experiences of hypnosis you've had with me and how it's felt to sit and listen to my voice speaking to you. Remembering the words and the sounds, how it felt as you drifted into that wonderful state of hypnosis. Just for a while. Nobody wants anything, no one expects anything. And there's nothing for you to do but to relax. That's right. With the eyes closed, it becomes easier and easier to relax. Although at times you may be more aware of some things than you were before. The sounds in the room. The sound of my voice. The comfort of the chair. The sounds outside the room. The comfort of the chair. Certain sensations. The beating of your heart. And the thoughts and images that drift into the mind automatically. Just for a moment, think about the people you love, people that love you, your friends. Maybe your, your dog, your cat, your family. Think about the people that love you, people that you love. And see those faces, feel that love. That reminds you of just how loved you are. Your real worth, your real value. Because with the eyes closed, it becomes easier. To become more and more aware of a variety of things that otherwise may go overlooked or ignored. Thoughts, feelings, sensations. The alteration of awareness as the mind begins, that gradual letting go. That's right. Letting go even of the effort it takes to be aware of exactly where the arms are positioned, or the hands or fingers. Even the effort it takes to be aware of which leg seems to relax more quickly or completely than the other may seem to be too much effort to bother making. But it takes time to experience that letting go. Your own time in your own way as you continue to learn even more than before about your abilities, your capacities to learn as you relax. And the mind begins to drift down toward a place of quietness. A place of peaceful inner awareness. A place that almost seems to give off signals that directs awareness down toward it, into it more and more comfortably, more and more effortlessly, more and more completely and deeply than before. Where even the effort it takes to be aware of the sound of my voice or the meaning of my words may almost seem to be too much effort to bother making. It's so much easier simply to relax and enjoy that letting go. Because not moving and not speaking makes it easier to not listen to anything other than the sound of my voice. A drifting down, deeper, deeper, deeper down. Imagine you're just dropping down through space and time. Where space and time no longer exist. Just you and the sound of my voice, every word I say doubles that wonderful feeling, takes you even deeper. I want you to enjoy every moment because the deeper you go, the better you will feel. And the better you feel, the deeper you'll go. 10, 20, 100 times deeper. Drifting down to that wonderful space of profound, deep hypnosis. Where you have access to all of your inner strengths, all of your healing abilities, all of your energy 
and you're drifting into that space now. And as you drift into that space, my voice, my words will drift with you to become a part of your experience now. Every word I say just doubles that feeling. Everything I say now becomes your reality. Every suggestion I give you, your body and your mind will act upon at a molecular, cellular, neurological level is now your reality. Because you have a conscious mind and an unconscious mind. And that unconscious mind, the back of the mind, can continue to hear, to understand, respond to those things I might say without the need for you to do anything at all. It's so much easier for the conscious mind simply to relax and enjoy that letting go. That's right. Letting go even of the effort it takes to make the effort that it might take. To tell the exact position of arms, legs or the entire body now that seems to drift through time and space. That wonderful free floating place of effortless relaxation and letting go. Allowing events to occur in their own time, in their own way, as you drift as a mind. And that mind drifts without boundaries, without borders, without limits. See yourself out there in your tomorrow, waking up, energized, refreshed, having slept soundly throughout the night. I want you to notice the way you move as you get out of your bed, that feeling of energy, your mind like it's been washed through with clear spring water, every limitation gone, every negative thought gone while you were sleeping, every past negative thought that ever held you back washed from your mind and your body while you slept and notice the extra energy throughout the day the stamina the feeling of freedom step into that body feel what it feels like and your unconscious mind knows exactly what you want i'd like your unconscious mind to make those changes now while the conscious mind drifts off someplace else entirely now. That's right, in your own time, in your own way. Aware of events that occur along the way. As the unconscious mind utilises that opportunity to alter your awareness and continue that learning in whatever way is the right way for you. Learning that feeling of letting go learning the ability to delete obsolete decisions, negative thoughts, limiting beliefs that were placed on you without you even knowing. Feel how good that feels to be able to do that. I want you for a moment just to imagine you're sitting in front of your laptop or sitting in front of your computer. I don't want you to see that screen in your mind's eye. See it now. Now I want you to see on that screen a big button on it which says defrag. And you can see those lines, all that stuff that was placed in your mind over all those years. And you can see those lines really closely packed together. You see the different colours and see them packed together. The colours, some of them are the negative thoughts. Some of those colours are the limiting beliefs. Some of those colours are the hurt, pain, sadness. Some of those colours are the angry words. They're jammed in there over the years, just slowing down that computer. And when you're ready to free yourself, to sleep soundly, to create the life, the body, the health, the happiness that you want, when you're ready to free yourself from all that and understand before you press that button that none of those things are any good for you anymore. They may have tried to serve you at some time, but you've evolved. You've upgraded the software in your brain and now you're going to defrag and clear out all of that junk from the past. Every limiting memory that's ever spiked you, 
every negative thought, every limiting belief, any hurt, pain, sadness, you're just about to do it. And when you're ready to do it, move that cursor onto that button and press the button now. And watch those lines starting to move. You can see them in your mind's eye. And now you can just listen to my voice and drift back into that wonderful state of hypnosis as that defrag is now continuing in the back of your mind automatically. And as you drift deeper, deeper, deeper down into that wonderful trance and my voice drifts with you, even deeper than before, you can use your unconscious mind as a resource that you can learn from, really have an experience, one that's satisfactory to you, all that's needed to build a good rapport with the unconscious is to have that line of communication. Sometimes it communicates by movement. It may be that your breathing changes and you'll find your heart slowing down and your breathing going deeper. It may be that the eye reflex changes and the eyes flicker uncontrollably. It may be that a muscle twitches or your head nods. It may be that the left hand moves all by itself, starts to feel lighter and lighter, starts to drift up and lift up, or the right arm goes even higher. Only the unconscious mind knows, which it will use as a communication, as an unconscious, honest, unconscious communication. So I'd like your unconscious mind to search all the things in your life Find one thing that is of vital and utmost importance to your health, your energy, your well-being, your thinking, your creativity, something that you want to feel better about, something you want to do differently that's really important to you. And when it's found that, I want it to increase those signals. That's right, bodies moving, heads nodding, eyes flickering, hands lighter and lighter. Even as you become aware of those sensations, they increase. And I don't know whether it be your left hand, right hand, both hands that drift up as the eyes flicker. But you'll know before I do, as those different movements begin, even as you drift deeper, deeper, deeper down into hypnosis. Now I'd like your unconscious mind to hand those signals to the part of you that is responsible for your sleep patterns. Part of you that runs your sleeping ability, that monitors your sleep, your physiology as you sleep. And when that part's taken full control of those signals, I'd like it to increase those signals so that you and I understand it's taking control. That's right, deeper, deeper, deeper down into that feeling. Eyes flickering, breathing changing. Feel yourself just dropping even deeper as those changes take place. Now I'd like to ask your unconscious mind, that part is responsible for your sleep. To go to the creative mind, the part of you that dreams, that has ideas, that makes plans, Allow that wonderful creative mind to run and flow and work, to clear out any irrational thoughts or fears or anxieties that have been preventing you from sleeping soundly, to make any changes at a hormonal level that will allow those, your sleep pattern to change. Allow those changes to take place at a molecular, cellular, a neuron level that will allow you to sleep soundly throughout the night. And each time it identifies a new choice, a change that it can make that will allow you to sleep well, I want it to increase those signals so that you understand. That's right. And even as you compare those movements as they grow, as they intensify, I want you in your mind's eye just in your mind's eye, imagine one of those old cartoon clocks, the ones you see in like the Tom and Jerry films, you know, with the big bells on the top. Picture in your mind's eye, picture that clock, that cartoon clock in your mind's eye, that alarm clock. And I want you to look at the, where the, the alarm is set at, where that hand's set at. And if it's not set 
to the time you want to wake up in the morning, I want you to move that hand round to the ideal time for you to wake up in the morning refreshed and energized. Do it now. Move that hand round on that old cartoon clock and then hit the button on the top and set that alarm. I'd like your unconscious mind from today to use that alarm to wake you up at the time you want to wake up. And from today, if you should wake up in the night to use the bathroom, the moment you get back into bed and you feel the comfort and security of your bed, you will instantly drift back into the most profound, wonderful, deep sleep. To awaken at the morning at the time you've set that new alarm to. From today, when you get into your bed at night, you repeat the word relax just four or five times in your mind and you will drift into the most profound, wonderful, deep sleep. To awaken in the morning at the time you've now set, refreshed, re-energized, and if you want to remember your dreams, and if you want to remember your dreams, before you drift off into sleep at night, just give your unconscious mind the instruction that any dreams that have any importance to you, that can have any positive impact on your life, you'd like to remember. Just ask your unconscious mind to make it happen for you, and you'll find yourself waking up with, that, with those dreams. But be aware that the moment someone speaks to you, that will disappear from your mind. So if you want to remember it, when you wake up in the morning, record it on your phone or write it down. But only the dreams that will have a positive impact on your life. From tonight, when you get into bed with the intention of going to sleep, repeat the word relax four or five times in your mind and you will instantly drift off into the most profound, wonderful, deep, refreshing, re-energizing sleep. I'd like your unconscious mind and part of you that's responsible for your body clock to make whatever changes so you can have the optimum sleep you need, the right amount of REM, the right amount of deep sleep and light sleep, so that you can wake up in the morning feeling absolutely refreshed. And I want your unconscious mind to make those changes now. And you may become aware of certain sensations in your body as those changes take place at a molecular level. While that's happening, see those lines on that computer now, thinning out. Notice the space between those lines. Notice the, the lines with the color for the negative thoughts are now gone. Notice the lines for the limiting beliefs are now gone. Notice the space between those lines has grown. Notice the colours for the angry words and the hurt, pain, sadness are now being deleted from your computer. And notice how your mind feels clear. And when you wake up in the morning, refreshed, re-energised, you'll find yourself able to focus clearly on the things that are important to you. Free of the past, free of every limitation, free to be. So as you drift deeper and deeper, deeper down into that feeling now, I'd like that part that's responsible for your sleep to pick as many new choices, make whatever changes at a molecular level that will layer that sleep. And when it's made those choices and made those changes, I want it to increase those signals so that you and I understand that those changes have taken place. Now I'd like to ask that part that's responsible for your sleep to integrate these new changes <clears throat> into your body and your mind. And when it's done that completely, that will allow you the sleep you want, the rest you need, the dreams that will fulfill you and allow you to have that life you want. When it's done that completely, I want it to increase those signals so you and I understand and I'd like to thank that part for communicating. And I know you're going to remember it thoroughly later on. And from tonight, whenever you get into your bed with the intention of going to sleep, you feel the coolness of that pillowcase. 
the security of your bed. You repeat that word in your mind, relax. Think about this time together. Use my voice if you need to. Just hear that voice, relax. 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 And as you hear that word in your mind, your body will relax completely. And you will go into the most profound, wonderful, deep sleep. To awaken at that new time you've set your alarm to. Refreshed, energised. I'd like to thank that part for communicating. And as you drift deeper and deeper, my voice, my words are going to drift with you. I want you to look back at that computer screen now and see there are only white lines. The space between those white lines is now clear. Every negative thought, every limiting belief, any hurt, pain and sadness that's ever been placed on you. Every doubt, every limitation gone from your mind and your body. All that's left is a clear understanding of how loved you are, how brilliant you are, your real worth, your real value. That understanding. You're allowed to love yourself. You're allowed to be kind to yourself and you will because you are worth it. And if at any time you or anyone else tries to place any doubt on you, or Trous tries to make you doubt that in any way, it will be as if I'm standing right beside you with my arm around your shoulder, whispering in your ear, you are incredible. You're an incredible being. You're a beautiful person. You are worthy of love. You are worthy of care. And you know I believe it. You know it's true. And every limitation will drop away from you. From today, you will look after yourself. You will treat yourself to the sleep that you need. You'll treat yourself to the nutrition that you need. You'll treat yourself to the water that your body needs. And you'll treat yourself to the love and kindness that you need. Because you are worth it. So as you drift deeper and deeper, even deeper than before, see yourself there, waking up in your tomorrow, having slept soundly throughout the night, re-energised, refreshed. See yourself getting out of that bed with a new feeling of energy, going about your day with a new stamina, with a smile on your face, free of every limiting belief, every irrational fear, every anxiety and stress, because it was never real in the first place. And understanding, if you ever come across a block, you can just ask that question. When did I make that decision? How old was I? Where was I? Who was I with? Was it even my decision? And with the understanding you've evolved, you've grown with the experience you have now, you can just delete that decision, the old limiting belief, delete it. Ask yourself that question. When did I make the decision to have that experience? And is it still viable? Does it serve me? And if not, delete it. See that screen now? All of that stuff deleted from your brain, your mind. And you're going to have a thing of freedom you may have never experienced before. A clarity you've never had before. A moment of enlightenment. An understanding of just how incredible you are. Go with your unconscious often as you need to. And it may be interesting to know that in that relaxed drifting state of mind where those changes are taking place where thoughts drift by like dreams some enter the mind some drift through the mind some are left behind to be used later on and others remembered or seem to be remembered at first but then become more and more distant forgotten over time this entire experience may seem so far away like a dream you had 
that you wanted to tell someone about and pff, it just disappeared. As the unconscious mind protects the conscious mind and leaves those things behind, forgotten, but remembered too. So to give you the opportunity now, go over with your unconscious often as you need to, to know that you're free. Free of every irrational fear and anxiety, free of every ounce of stress. Free to love, free to be loved. Free to love yourself and be kind to yourself. I know it's okay to do that. And only when the unconscious mind knows and has made those changes that will allow you to have the sleep you want, the health you want, the life you want, the happiness you want, and create the body you want. And allows the conscious mind to accept the changes made. Because you know what, I'm going to count to 10. Every suggestion I've given you, your mind and body will act upon at a molecular cellular level. From tonight, you will sleep soundly. You awaken in the morning at the time you've set your new body clock to, refreshed and re-energized. Imagine that's happening automatically right now. Those changes are taking place and there's nothing you can do about it. It's just the way it is. Even at first you have to pretend there was something that was said to you, something that was done to you. You really have no choice. You're just sleeping soundly throughout the night. Go as often as you need to, because I'm going to count to 10. On eight, your eyes will open and you will feel incredible. Like you've had the best eight hour sleep you've ever had. And on 10, that feeling of empowerment, that feeling of calm, that feeling of peace and love and joy is going to grow stronger day by day. As you get back to the optimum sleeping pattern for your body and your mind. So get ready as I count to 10. On eight, your eyes will open. You are going to feel incredible. A lightness of being. Your brain has now been defragged. All of those useless memories, words, emotions cleared from your mind completely. On 10, that feeling of freedom is going to grow stronger day by day. One, feeling absolutely wonderful. Two, to achieve everything you want to achieve and do it brilliantly. Three, feeling of freedom from every limiting belief, every negative memory, every negative emotion that was ever placed on you. Feel that freedom now flooding your body and your mind. Four, feel a force of that energy and love flooding your body. Feel it from everyone in this group. Imagine the force of those combined energies flooding your body and lifting you up and lighting you up now. Five, feeling incredibly alive. Six, seven, eight, eyes opening, feeling absolutely incredible. Nine, ten. That's right, take your time. Excellent. <laughs> Okay, well, for some of us, it is getting to night time. For others, it's breakfast time. And for others, it's lunch. But wherever time you're going to go to sleep in your day, remember, repeat the word relax. Think about our time together and drift into that wonderful sleep. And Jess, you know, if it's your intention now to remember your dreams, only the positive ones. Just ask your unconscious mind to make it happen for you. And, um, yeah, and I'll put you in touch with Mikhail with the lucid dreaming, if it's something you quite quite like to do. Thank you. It is an experience. I don't think it's something you want to do too often. But it, as, as a kind of control thing, where you're actually awake in your, in your sleep, you're awake in your dream, and you can control the dream. It's a bit of a weird situation to be in, but it's, I think it's something you might enjoy doing. Um, I'll put you in touch with him. And Thank and you. Some stuff on it. I'm not sure that Becky's back yet. I can see her down here in, the, in one of the, the, the windows, but she's probably, that sleep thing works a little bit too well for Becky, I think. She's still 
in the land and nod. Um, Can I just ask you a question, Freddie? Yeah, of course, Matthew, yeah. Um, you said that you'll only be able to remember those dreams until somebody talks to you. Yeah. Well, as soon as my wife sees my eyes open, she starts talking to me. I've got no chance remembering my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you sneakily wake up? Or, or wake up with your eyes closed and remember your dream before you open your eyes. You won't know. I'm going to have to do that, yeah. But also, as hypnotherapists, you know, sometimes it's of use to create amnesia in a client. If you think your client's going to analyse everything you've said in hypnosis, and it's not a good thing for your client to do often, you know, especially if they come, you, you get couples coming together, you get a group of people coming together, and you know on, on the bus on the way home, they're going to be talking about what happened. Did you hear this? Did you hear that? If you want to give them amnesia, it's exactly the same thing. The moment they open their eyes, when you're bringing them out of hypnosis, the very moment, not two minutes later or a minute later, but when they open their eyes, you just distract them. So, and something completely off the wall. So you can say, oh, they're nice shoes, where'd you buy them? Or are those your glasses? Or is that your cup? Something that has nothing to do with the therapy at all. In that moment, it's that moment that you get, Matthew, when you think, oh, it's a really good dream, that. Then your wife speaks and you go, hold on, I was going to say about this dream, now it's gone. It's the same when we, when we bring someone out of hypnosis. If you want to create amnesia, amnesia yeah, if, or amnesia even, then just distract them as they come out. You can, of course, give them suggestions for amnesia. You know, it's, this is how I do it. It's easy to forget. We put our keys down sometimes. We forget where you put them, and it's easy to forget. And this entire experience will seem so far away. So you can, you can suggest it, but you can also see Jess, is, she's ready for her bed. You can see it. She's yawning. And, and that's another thing. I do have that effect on some women, Jess. I do make them yawn. So look, um, I hope you enjoyed this evening. Wherever you are, sleep soundly. Have a great day there, Gaylene. Um, and are you, Diana, in the 80 degree heat? Think about me. I've got to go out and get my car, scrape the ice off it. And, uh, oh. yeah, yeah, see, uh, yeah, not a pleasant thought. So, look, uh, wherever you are, sleep well. I hope you're enjoying these evenings. I'm going to keep going. Any suggestions? Yes, Alyssa, let me know, won't you, how, how well you sleep? And, um, yeah, if you've got any suggestions for what we can be doing, then let me know. Something you particularly want me to work with you on, because generally what someone's experiencing, everyone's experiencing. Did you enjoy it, Desiree? Excellent. Good. Good. Okay. Right. Well, look, have a lovely day, evening, morning, wherever you are, and I'll see you all soon. Okay. Take care. And Thank thanks you, again, Jess, for everything. Thank you. Thanks again, Jess, for all you're doing with the kickboxing. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, Bye Freddie. Now. Good night, every or good night to those of you at where it's night. <laughs> yeah. And a good day for you. All right. And well done, Jackie, again for doing that. And keep writing. You know, people ask me about writing books and they say, you know, you've written these books and I've written, I don't know, three or four books, maybe five. But I write them for, I just write them because I want to enjoy writing them. You don't, if you worry about what other people think about it, you never do it. Just think, am I enjoying it? Am I, is it a project I, I'm passionate about? And then write from your heart and then get someone else like I do to correct the spellings and the grammar. <laughs> 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 I, I, I've done some English at school, which I haven't. Um, so, yeah, but just write from your heart. And like you did today, you moved a lot of people today with your message. And I'm really proud of you for doing it. Thank you. you know, feel the fear and do it anyway. Yeah. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Uh, I'll speak to you. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye.